Every part of production is important, but without a script, nothing can be created. The writer has a massive amount of responsibility in shaping the universe. It doesn't matter the scale, telling a side story or some epic crisis, people remember those details. The writing is what decides what properties are remembered forever or mutilated in critiques over the internet. Power Rangers has an extra gear in the clock. They have existing footage right at the fingertips. At a quick glance, some would be happy. They don't have to do a lot of work. Almost all the work is there. But when you go into the sea of spandex, and you realize you have to do a lot of things for this to connect. It'd be like cutting out all the DeLorean scenes in Back to the Future. What do you do to explain how Marty went back in time? Now do that for a whole season. Create six characters that people like, follow a formula, and get it out the door to be successful. That's lightning in a bottle. Thank you, Jacob Lockheed, for this suggestion. If you have an idea or a topic you'd like me to cover, shoot me one down below. I might use it someday. Stuart St. John. Besides sharing the same last name as our Red Ranger actor, St. John covered most of the major episodes of the first MMPR season. Doomsday, Green with Evil, Island of Illusion. Jew Ranger is a very zany season. I was amazed how they changed so many things around and got them to work in MMPR. These episodes are the reason why I believe it became a franchise. We lost the Green Ranger powers twice. What kid show did that in 93? The closest you got was the death of Optimus Prime. We care about seven robotic dinosaurs dying, all the fields in the right places. That's what Seward St. John accomplished. John Telligan. Telligan was one of the main Disney season writers. The quality was hit and miss depending on the season. His first work, along with Mark Hoffmeyer, was Shane's Karma. Great starting point. That's one of my favorite Ninja Storm episodes. He's great at doing solo or group character pieces. You want to see who Kira was? We find out she used to sing with an old friend in Ocean Alert. Want to take advantage of Ethan's weakness with video games? He wrote Game On. Even that crazy meteorite episode, Leader of the Whack. Scott's problems with his dad in Ranger Red. Telegan has a good range of fun and serious. He's also great at adapting Sentai material. He used all the good parts of Decker Ranger for the Sophie episodes. A lot of times I really don't care about these guest characters. They almost never do things. They're just there for info dumping. This two-parter was more about Sophie than the SPD Rangers. It sucks that she didn't end up being Nova Ranger in the finale. That was a missed opportunity. Telgan even made good clip shows, Insomnia. He gave it a purpose using the stock footage. And Korok's trial was decent enough. Even in the seasons that people usually don't like, that one episode that you love, he's probably wrote it. Like Petrified Xander and Man of Mercury. I will say he did a few clunkers, such as Ronnie on Empty and the horrible Don't Blow That Dough episode. You were doing so well with clip shows. I would like him to come back and do more episodes. Your characters have complicated backgrounds? Get this guy. Eddie Gazillion. While Gazillion did screw up and got himself fired from the season, he came up with probably one of the most original ideas for a PR show in a while. Not in the characters and direction, but with the Super Sentai he was using. RPM is nothing like Go Under. All under a show that's low budget and is being canceled? He pulled off a lot. Some of the older aspects from the past seasons did get phased out. Remember how they would slowly introduce us to our characters and gear? But more and more seasons started to cram origin stories, their weapons, their Megazord, all within one or two episodes. Those seasons started feeling like check marks. Everything just got sped up. The show was about selling toys. That's never been a problem to me, but you really should build stuff up over a few episodes. Look at Lost Galaxy. There was a full episode getting the trans daggers, then finding the Galactabeast was another one. It took a bit to see the Galaxy Megazord. Nowadays, you're lucky to have the Megazord saved for the third episode. Here, they kept all the Rangers' backstories for solo episodes. Extending it out like this gave some breathing room while still promoting the toys and using the Sentai footage as much as it can. Dylan and Ziggy got thrown in jail in the second episode. Ziggy becoming a Ranger was the stupidest thing ever done, and I loved it. You don't need to be heroic all the time. They even did some fun pokes at Sentai, having Jim and Jim a totally insane while the Go On Wings were the complete opposites. All the weird stuff that happens, like random explosions, the designs, shows rarely ever joke on themselves. RPM hit that right balance of comedy on the nose. I wish the Neo Saban seasons were able to replicate this balance. Even though the ending was a copy of the Andros Corone dynamic, RPM still ended on a good note. Douglas Sloan. This man has done a lot of stuff. He's worked on a good chunk of the franchise, the first half of the Saban seasons, and a few of the Disney seasons. The man's not perfect, his first writing job was a pig of surprise, and I will always hate when Tori and Shane talk about the Rangers not being real. 
but he knows how to utilize the cast. He loves to work on multi-parters. It gives the characters more to do. He can focus on U.S. material longer, then go into Sentai when needed. Sloan even tried to bring back Scorpina. We were left wondering what happened to her. He gave her a good reintroduction, which sadly went nowhere. He also did some bottle episodes, reusing monster suits in a real fish story. That was a decent season two filler episode. Sloan also worked on the bizarre storybook rangers. I really want to know where he was when he came up with that one. It went as far as a PR episode could be done without jumping the shark, but just barely. Sloan is also a decent director and helps to serve in multiple positions on a show. You know, the intricacies, focus on that character, this has to be emotional, the writer wants us to feel scared here, it gives that little extra love. By far his best work is Different Shades of Pink, the only ranger that's gotten a proper send off. Shooky Levy! Haim Saban and Shooky Levy created Power Rangers, but if you wanted to say who the father was, it was him. He and Tony Oliver set the tone of the entire franchise. He was responsible in writing key Kim and Trini episodes for season one, was one of the writers on the fan favorite episodes like White Light and Return of the Green Ranger. However you feel towards Tommy, he knew how to maximize that full milk, even sometimes directing episodes he wrote. It was fitting he wrote Kim's first standalone episode and her final standalone episode. It wasn't the greatest episode, but you saw that he cared. If you ever have to bring back a ranger in a big way, he's your man. I wish he had continued on, but passing the torch was a good way to end his run. Cheryl Saban! Like Levy, Cheryl Saban is the mother of Power Rangers. She created scenes and stables that are still done today. Everyone loves Food Fight. She knew how to work Japan's odd monsters and go beyond what they did and made a memorable episode. If you watch the original Jew Ranger episode, it's cute and fun. Saban made it go up to 11, not to mention the first time a monster interacted with the Rangers out of suit and in the juice bar. She, along with two others, wrote the second episode of Green with Evil, my favorite episode from that arc. That's where I fell in love with the Evil Ranger story. This is how powers like these can be used in the worst of ways. That episode made Goldar. It's the one that showed you why Jason was the Red Ranger. So when I see stories like Trent or Ryan, they always make me go back and remember when I was seven and watch this episode for the first time. She's also a psychologist. This was perfect for Billy's Fear of Fish episode. She tried to do things visually to show people what it's like to be scared. That's hard to do. Everyone has different fears. Sometimes you can't relate, but it was enough for you to understand Billy's position. She gave Trini her first leadership role on the team. It felt right. There are three of the Rangers were trapped. You have Billy and Trini. This is season one, so Billy is still this inexperienced Ranger at the same time she kept it balanced. It's super easy to have one character look bad and one character look good, but both helped each other. While Billy messed up, you can see Trini is trying really hard to control the situation at the cost of screwing some things up herself as well. And who can forget Kim playing Rita in Beauty and the Beast? It's a few times I love over-the-top acting. I can keep going on. The Mirror of Regret, Storybook Rangers, a good slew of wacky brain episodes of Power Rangers. It sucks that she stopped at the end of season two. It would have been nice if she had remained on till the end of MMPR. And Austin. Sloan and Austin pulled it together in the early years of the show moving to New Zealand. They're one of the few producer writers that took the criticism Ninja Storm got and retooled the series in Power Rangers Dino Thunder. I love Ninja Storm, but all the people that hate it, that criticism is totally valid. There's a lot of dumb choices and comedy beats that are problematic, and instead of ignoring fan input, which is pretty common with companies, both of them went, okay, fix the comedy, let's do something better. So they came up with Mezagog, realistic interpretations being in high school. These few things made Dino Thunder one of the top Disney era seasons. Austin writing key episodes, some being super important to get right. Legacy of Power. Yeah, it's a clip show, but if you get information wrong, you're gonna get a lot of hate. And writing the return of Tommy to a new Ranger Power is a hard thing to do. You have to make it pay off that fan service, but you can't make it over the top. I really didn't like the whole white light reveal. They went overboard on the hype. No, don't make him Jesus. He's popular, but keep things under control. This episode being a good example, she wrote a decent chunk of Dino Thunder episodes, The Passion of Connor, Triassic, Triumph, Bully for Ethan, good solid episodes about the guys. Dino Thunder really used the school setting to its advantage. I miss that so much from Megaforce and Ninja Steel. Rig Aronowitz. I know everyone is gonna say, this is an odd choice, why are you putting him as three? Even though Aronowitz didn't write that many episodes, he's what I love to see on a show. The man has passion. Yes, 
He didn't write that many SPD episodes, but he was writing the show in the background. Not only is he a writer, but a director, producer, and an artist for SPD. He was responsible for all the alien work you saw in the US footage. He took the idea from Decker Ranger and went beyond what they did with no money. He pushed those characters, he pushed those plot lines. Watch the DVD bonus features with him. SPD had quality that we don't really see anymore. There was a cost from all this. It's one of the reasons why Omega Ranger was completely messed up. There's some cast that I really love. SPD is one of them. That's why I put him as my number three. Even though he only wrote three episodes, what he did is rememberable. Even though I don't like what he's been doing in recent years, bar a handful of episodes, Judd Lynn has done really great work. Almost every time I list a favorite episode of mine, 8 out of 10, he wrote it. Lynn has done a lot of stuff. Odd stories like The Great Bukla Escape, Blue Ranger Gone Bad, Trouble Minus Lice. He always had that knack of getting not so like characters good. I think that's what makes him almost perfect, which is why it's shocking with the recent PR seasons. We've seen in the past, PR can be great under his scripts. He took a one-off suit from Car Ranger and turned it into this giant mystery of the Phantom Ranger. Bizarre episodes like Cassie's best friend work because of his talent. Look at his run from In Space through Time Force. The countless episodes I could list from just those four years. He's written more episodes than any other PR writer, but there are times he has made episodes that were flat out bad, like our favorite episode, Carlos on Call. I really wanted to put him as number one, but I couldn't. In the recent seasons where he's been mostly messing up, there's one writer that's been missing from that equation. Thank you, Marshawn. I have to give my number one spot to Marshawn. She's been in this franchise for years. She's also worked on four seasons too, but it shows that she was the deciding factor in a lot of good directions each of the seasons took. In my opinion, that's why Judd Lynn has been messing up. While the writers work on an episode, both of them are always bantering. One pushes this way, one pushes that way. I see her as the compass with Judd Lynn's boat. Maybe he comes up with this insane story, it's all over the place, and she reels it in. Work with crazy, but hit those beats, get those moments in, don't go too far in this part. And it shows, when Marshawn and Lynn work together, and they get the right to basically the entire season, it's what you want to see out of Power Rangers. It's two voices that know what they want to do at the same time, a bidding to all the restrictions the show throws at them. There's a load of episodes I could bring up. Bulk Fiction, the deciding episode that changed what Stone, Bulk, and Skull would be doing in Zeo. We saw his character change. He quit the force because he got stone fired. She is the one who made Tommy and Kat married in the future Christmas episode. I don't care for the episode, not because of the future stuff, but just the way it was framed. But you can see Judd respected that decision in the 25th anniversary. The Silver Secret, where Zane was revealed to the other Rangers. It showed you that damaged side of Andros. Brian's Destiny. Remember, there's no Sixth Ranger in GoGo5, and they crafted an episode that had feathers as bombs, showing Ryan's decision to work together. Jackie set up the Thunder Rangers and Cam in Ninja Storm. Trent's arc in Dino Thunder wrote probably the best example of fan service, Fighting Spirit, gave closure to Sky's story in SPD, giving the legend powers to the Mystic Force Rangers. One of my favorite Green Ranger backstories, Ziggy and the Mob. Again, she's not perfect. She did stumble with once a Ranger. I still hate it that the Overdrive team just walks away and does nothing. I just don't like Power Rangers in one way. I love the series everywhere. Goofy episode, dramatic episode, action episode. It doesn't matter to me. You can write the most basic filler episode. It adds nothing to the character or the plot. As long as it's a good story and it doesn't block other things being done or contradicts things, I'm gonna like it. I'm assuming a lot of people who watch my videos think that I want the show to always be one way. It has to be serious. No, I can appreciate dumb fluff too. That's why I love all these writers. They're versatile in what they do. It's a blessing that Power Rangers allows this type of storytelling. We're in a universe that five people wear spandex, sparks flying around, giant aliens and robots blowing stuff up in this city. People adore a blue head guy. One minute bulk face planting into a cake, the next minute Jen is taking revenge. Deviat killing Scorpius, Ecliptor loving Astronema to the end. Very few other shows out there allow this kind of flexibility. Even though it's a kid's show, this is a playground for a writer. Look at all the stuff Japan brings to the table. Who thinks up of a giant pig with a Roman hat and the only way to get rid of him is to feed him spicy food? It's a giant collaboration between two countries. That's the reason why I stuck around with this series. There's a few other shows out there that have lasted this long, but I've long quit on them. 
Power Rangers has traditional formulaic elements. It's what you do with that is where it counts the most. What are your opinions on my choices? There's a lot of other writers on the series, but I think I picked the best ones. New episodes every Monday. Next week, the seasons of Power Rangers that work better than Super Sentai.